Raised in a culture of immediacy, Americans are not very good at waiting. We expect instant results and quick success. And our latest Black Friday demonstrates our inability to wait. The hour that we can begin shopping has slowly crept up until this year when shoppers actually began on Thursday. Many retail workers had to eat turkey, grab a quick nap, and then that very evening go to work. Some shoppers missed Thanksgiving completely because they were camped outside of stores. And when the doors did open and the crowds pushed in, the competitive shopping began. With each consumer trying to hunt in greedy expectation to bag that bargain and take it home. Frustration built to desperation when bargain hunters couldn't get the merchandise they wanted. And one woman, in her anxiety and in her aggravation, attacked the shoppers around her with pepper spray. To save a few dollars, she sprayed, and people's skin began to burn, and their faces began to swell, their throats were irritated, and their eyes were weeping. Screams started to fill the store, and more merchandise was knocked over in the chaos and trampled. All of this at 10 o'clock on Thursday, Thanksgiving, the day that we have put aside to be grateful for what we already have. My son, who manages a video game store, reminds us that there is no need to buy a game a few hours earlier. This is not critical me medicine for a dying patient. This is not finding food for someone who's starving. And yet people's lives are threatened by our drive for entertainment and our inability to wait. Why? Why do people need an electronic game so badly? Why do people strive so hard for a good deal? What are they searching for? We are hungry for something. It's like the after-dinner munchies. First we nibble on a cookie, and then Maybe it wasn't sweet, maybe it was salt, so we go for the bag of chips. And that's not quite doing it because the whole, the emptiness in us isn't being filled up. The desire isn't being quelled. Restless discontent can't be calmed with ice cream and candy. The underlying longings can't be quelled with a new toy, a new electronic gadget, a new car. New shoes are not going to bring us one step closer to what we are really looking for. We are crying out for our Creator. We are hungry for a stronger connection with our Source. And only God can give us that ultimate comfort, the ultimate satisfaction that inexplicable peace. Now many of us aren't really aware that it's a relationship with God that we're looking for. We think we're independent, capable of looking after ourselves. We shouldn't have to ask for help, and when life throws us a curb and we need to, we get angry. We're leaders. We're path setters. We're American trailblazers. We like to lead the way, not follow. But deep down, we still feel a little bit lost. We are builders, producers, empire makers.
and yet our economy is in a mess. We can't even feed all the people in our nation, let alone all the people in the world. And a strong wind or a big wave can carry away all that we've built. Humankind has been like this since the very beginning. Consider our first reading, written about 700 years before the common era. Isaiah cried out to God, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. He wished that the nations would tremble at God's presence. Isaiah felt like the people had lost their way, that their lives had become like a pile of dirty rags. And he wanted God to come, come and make it right. Isaiah yearned for the potter to work his clay. He wanted to be remade. He wanted to be put right just through God's touch. And God came. We wanted a powerful warrior who would conquer others and make us rulers. But we got a life changer that came in the form of an ordinary man <clears throat> with a frail human being who expected, experienced all the pain and all the rejection that all humans feel. But with the power to conquer hearts, and bring them back into a relationship with the divine. We got a peacemaker who spent himself completely so that we would know that God rules with love. Jesus' coming was the beginning of a new age. Jesus continues to be with us. Jesus will come again. Like the disciples that we read about in Mark's Gospels, we look forward to Jesus' coming. We look forward to God's good end, the end that we need. We want to feel our Lord's power. We want to see our Lord's glory. We want to hear the voice of the Lord. We pray for God's presence. Our poets write about it, and our musicians sing about it. My sweet Lord, I really want to know you. I really want to be with you. George Harrison names our deepest longing. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Our world is like an old computer, so clogged up for information that it slugs along, getting slower and slower. We need a reboot. We're waiting for a software update. We are really waiting for the ultimate update that will reformat, defrag, and restore us. We really want to be free to be the creations that God created us to be. We want the end, the end that we need, the end that will take us back to the beginning in our Lord and our Creator. T.S. Eliot said it this way, We shall not cease from exploring, and the end of all of our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. Take out your bulletins again. Turn to the very beginning of our worship service, to the call of worship, and let's read that again. Come, people of faith, come join your hearts in worship. We hear the invitation and hunger to join in the feast. God is faithful and calls us into a loving presence of Jesus who is the Christ. We come to join with those who watch and wait and celebrate. Amen. We hunger to join in the Lord's feast. We are called to be in the presence of Jesus. Together, all of us together, we watch and we wait and we celebrate. If I had titled this sermon Apocalypse Now and focused like Harold Camping on when the end was coming and who was going to be raptured, 
and who was going to be left. Then I would be focusing on a dead end rather than looking for life, Christ's life-giving purpose. Beware, keep awake, watch, Jesus says. His message is about rupture, being alert to the inbreaking of God's reign, not rapture, the removal of a few. The word advent means to come towards, to turn towards, to come closer. It is my hope for you in the weeks coming that a society gears up for a season of gluttony and excess, that you're able to resist the frenzy, that you recognize what you are hungry for and turn towards our Lord, our source, our creator. I hope that you can carve out some time from your busy schedules to make some Advent space, to find some quiet time for reflection so that you can remember that you are a child of God. I hope that you will have time for prayers or an Advent devotional so that you can be filled this Advent with a renewed purpose and work for God's will and hope that all will have life in abundance. Together, we can be aware, watch, and be alert, centered in the belief that Christ has come, that Christ is with us, and that Christ will come again. Amen. Amen.